co-host who ever co-hosts a podcast, Michael Wood, cannot be here today. Shout out, Mike. Much love for you, Mike. Anywho, shout out, Mike. Shout out, Mike. We got my substitution for the day. Hey. <laughs> Wave X in the building, baby. What's How you good? Doing? What's good? I'm doing good. How are you today? Man, I'm I'm floating. Um I'm, I'm I'm floating, baby. Hey man, how you feeling about the about the matchup today? Matchup, man. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be something special. It's gonna be something special. I think it's gonna be something special because I Jason Tatum, he hasn't played two bad games in a row. Right. There's okay. a lot on the line for the Warriors. There's a lot on the line on the Celtics. I think we should get right into that. Let's go. Okay. I'm down. I'm down. So as we're looking through the NBA Finals, and we're going to chop it up about the NBA Finals. You had an interesting take about Steph Curry, and we're going to start it off. We're going to start it off with some hot sizzling take, and we're going to call it Hot Take Monday. Okay. So give me give, give, give me your hot take about Curry because we were talking about this over, Curry, over really, on our phones. Really, I think we was talking about um, we was talking about uh, Curry being one of the, like the greatest all time where he was ranking, mm-hmm. right? So I had a, I had a hot tank on where where I think he should be. I feel like I I, I got him in a special spot on my list. Okay. I, feel like, uh, I feel like people are gonna be surprised about that. Oh, all right. So th- you gotta you can't you can't just say all that and not drop a spot. You you gotta drop a spot. I gotta drop it. Okay, I got I got names. Okay, I'm gonna go. I think he was at seven. I think he was at seven or something. Okay. Like that. okay. But that's pretty hot for the all timers. You know what I'm saying? It's great. Yeah. No, you feel me? I'm still waiting for LeBron to pass Michael Jordan, but I, I'm not gonna give it to him until um. Into his career end, I feel like he got to mm-hmm. play the end of his career. I feel like he ain't got six rings yet, so he really got to play to the end of his career to pass Michael Jordan all time. Right. So I got mm-hmm. Michael Jordan first. I got LeBron James second. I got uh, let me see who I get. Uh, Kareem, Kareem third, Kareem, Kareem. I don't know. I think I, I got my list on my phone, but I don't want to. I don't want to stop the podcast from recording. So I got it. I got it. I should have wrote it down. Um, you good? You good? You good? It's a hard list. It's a hard list. Okay. Who's man? Who was for? Kareem. Kobe. Kobe. Okay. Kobe. You got Kobe you gotta have four. Kobe in there. Totally. Kobe also so Kobe's four. And then um five. Five was um wasn't the guard, it wasn't the point guard. So I gotta think now because it was a it was a really tough list. I had to really put um man. I got it. Uh, what's, what, what's the what's the list so far? It's uh, it's uh, MJ, MJ, LeBron. LeBron. You said Kareem, right? Kareem at three, and then Kobe, Kobe at four. Kobe at four. Okay. Um. So we got. Uh, I'm gonna go Kevin Durant. I'm gonna go Kevin Durant. Ooh. Okay. Go. Okay. No shit. I don't get list in front of me. I, I don't get the list in front of me because Kevin Durant, man, he's a, he's consistent. He's he's a he just needs to carry a team by himself. That's the only thing that's on his rep. He would be okay. like LeBron, probably like LeBron if he if he could do that. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. Throughout his career in the NBA history, who who who's dominated like KD from start to finish the way he the way he does. You know what I mean? Only thing he needs to do is is win by himself. To me, I feel like it's the only thing missing from his resume. He got MVPs. You know what I mean? Like, come on. I'm gonna I'm get Stephen A. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get my little Stephen A. on for a little bit. You said who dominated as him as the scoring position? Yeah, he, he's got that. But all around, I mean, we can't forget about Shaq. We can't okay, forget I about that. I had Shaq. I had Shaq. Okay, okay. so boom, boom, let me put Shaq up. See, you, you, I think you fixed my missing piece. That's what it was. It was Shaq, Shaq, okay. and then KD. I mean, okay. KD. Okay, and then right under KD, that's where I had Curry. I believe mm-hmm. Curry right there. Right there, because I feel like, you know what? We just talking about talent. I still gotta have. I still got stuff right, right below KD, right below KD. Okay. I'm gonna be honest. Okay. I'm, gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I think I think that's a fair spot to put Steph because Steph and his rings. A lot of people starting to question them because you look at who he run who he won his rings with. He right. won it with Draymond and Clay. And they they built that together. Right. But he won his two more rings when KD came around. And he was right. kind of playing second fiddle of it all. And he really, really didn't have to do anything. And then you're looking at LeBron's right. shoes. You're like, okay, yeah. you I have to go up uh, go up against demigods. Who else did right. that? Right? <laughs> and you can, you, can men- you can mention uh, you can mention MJ back yeah. in 1990, his first finals. But then a lot of people are going to say, well, they were all old and out of out of their prawns. Magic was still giving 
people bucket. Same with James nah, Worthy. Was cold. Magic was off. He ma- he didn't make my list only because of really his playing style. You know, I feel uh-huh. like if we go in all time now, I feel like Magic to me goes down just because I feel like Curry is the more efficient guard. Like he's your your team definitely winning at least 45, 40 games with Curry in his mm-hmm. prime. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the same way with Magic too, but I feel like just Curry being as dangerous as he is, that's even why the, the Golden State Warriors in the finals right now to me personally. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because Clay's still coming back. Like they're in the finals. They they went through the, the West. They're playing the Celtics right now. I feel like they I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it's an interesting year in the finals. I ain't going to lie. I feel like it's one of them years where it's not a legendary, legendary matchup, but mm-hmm. it's one of them times in history It's probably going to tell, you know what I mean, the Golden State Warriors story, or Steph Curry story, whatever happens, you know. I don't feel like if if the, if the Celtics win, well, uh, you know, uh, Tatum and uh, Brown, I don't feel like it's going to be a, a start to a really – I feel like they're dope players, right? But I don't mm-hmm. feel like it's – I don't feel like they're there yet in Star Wars. I, I want Tatum really, he got to prove himself to me in the finals. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting Tatum to really, like, take take the lead in the finals and stuff and prove if he's really that person. If Because you look at the Kobe, you know what I mean? If he's mm-hmm. really that person, he's in the finals right now. He got to do it. I feel like he got to, he got to, he can't be an average player. He's not average. He's pretty good. But we talking about, like, 30, 32, 35. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, that's hot. If you like Kobe, you know what I mean? D-Book, I'm, I'm holding D-Book to the same standards, too. They was in the finals right. last year. So that's just how I feel about the, the matchup this year, basically. No, yeah, I feel that because if you're Jason Tatum or if you're looking at Jason Tatum as that possible superstar, right. you want him to step up in times like these. And I was talking to my friend about this the other day. Uh, he was talking, he brought up that he took, Jason Tatum took 23 shots and he had 23 points. And I was like, that's rare because like yeah. you never <laughs> attempt right. those many shots and get uh-huh. that amount of points. Right. And shots of attempt. Like I thought that was like pretty. I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. But like an efficiency, it, it's not. It's not good. And right. in a game where you're at home, you're at the Garden. You can right. go up e one, and then go and possibly go into Golden State and uh-huh. take over. Right. That that is that's, like. Yeah. That's like the status booster right there. Right. That's like okay, he's him. That's exactly. the guy that I want in my top time. To yourself in. It's not. It's not about scoring 50. It's about just doing what you need to do. Like, you're supposed to dream. Is, if you dream, uh, dream of this moment as a kid, you know what I mean? Jason, we're talking about somebody that want to be one of the greats, right? We're not just talking mm-hmm. about him being just a regular player. Like, I'm trying to hold him to some standards. So, it's like me. It's like he really he did a, he had a really good first half uh, last game. He had a really good first half, and I really was impressed by the way he was playing. I feel like he was making hustle plays. I seen him, you know, dive and get the team hyped up. I feel like I've seen signs of that, but it's just like, the second half, I seen a completely different person. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, man, he's not – what happened? Like, it, it burned out, but he really was doing that the first. It's just – I feel like he wasn't, like – I feel like mentally he just – he just not finishing – you know what I mean? Finishing finishing the the, uh, the focus off to, to close a game, close an important game in the finals. I feel like he, he still – he's still a young player, and I feel like he's still, you know, getting his feet under him in the finals and, and having all this pressure on him. I feel like Jalen Brown is really cold too, but we all know that Jason Tim's gonna get the majority of the attention. He's just, I don't know, it's just the way that the team is made up. I feel like Brown, he had a really uh, sneaky 15 points in the first half, I believe. He was he was scoring, he was he's that dog, but I feel like just Tatum, the way he plays, people definitely watch him. Oh man, what's that? Yeah, that that was that was a tornado <laughs> warden, my bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, that was a hot take. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, you probably got you probably got the tornadoes the swarm, swarming <laughs> over. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, I think Tatum, for me personally, I can't start talking about Tatum's legacy just yet because it's so early in Lord. his career that there's so many more moments that I think Jason Tatum's going to have that is going to build upon his legacy. Now, this right here, this is for Steph's legacy and Jason Tatum's legacy. Right, and right. For Jason Tatum, the reason I say that is the path for him to get to the NBA Finals wasn't an easy path. I mean, he had to go up against Kevin Durant and Kyrie, one of the best duos that the NBA has ever seen assemble. Then you have to turn around and go up against Giannis and Drew Holiday. But it was really just the Giannis show. And offensively, he was keeping up with Giannis. And defensively, he was containing Giannis, which is not an easy job to do. And then... After that series, you have to go up against an effortless, I mean, effortless player in Jimmy Butler, putting it all on the floor, game in, game 
out, just literally carrying his team. And you want guys like that because it electrifies your offense. It's it true. makes guys think like, wait a minute, Jimmy's playing good, so I yeah. got playing good too. Yeah. And then once they start playing good on offense, it translates on defense. Good offense plays plays a part in good defense. Right. And then Steph Curry, on the other hand, if he wins this, you start naming all of his accolades, you start looking at all of his accolades, and you start looking at what he did in the NBA Finals. Right. I mean, you you just look at two-time two time MVP. Man. One unanimous MVP. The only unanimous MVP to win or to win MVP. Then you look at NBA Finals leader in three-point field goals, three-pointers in a single game, three-pointers attempted, most points in an NBA Finals game. Um, he's ninth in that. Uh, most career points in NBA Finals game, or not NBA Finals, in the NBA Finals, he's 14th Man. in that. And then most career assists, he's 15th in that. So he's in these top 15, top 10 categories for yeah. the NBA Finals. So you add another Man. Finals on top of that, and then yeah. you add what he did for the game and the evolution right. around it, mm-hmm. and you're starting to think like, whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can start putting them in that top five conversation. Yeah, yeah. Gotta go up. Who's he going over? Who's he going over? I think it's hard. It's hard. If I had to, if I had to pick one, I, if I had to pick one. Well, first we're gonna give him KD. He'll go over KD for sure. But I yeah, think he KD. Too. He gotta go. KD. But my my about to cut you off. KD yeah. is. I I would say I I would say KD is top ten maybe. Okay. Maybe top ten. If he's not in my top ten, he's top fifteen. I think you got to throw you got to throw magic in there, and then you got to throw. Foot, hey, seven foot. They can they can they can do what he do though. Magic is somebody that was a porn guard, but I don't feel like he's better than KD. They both they, they, in, they both they both were tall. They both were different for their position. <laughs> in the playmaking department, I think Magic Johnson blows out. Most KD. definitely, most definitely blows out KD. Dribbling department, I I would say I would say they're close. It's KD, it's close. KD, you gotta give it, it, it's close. Okay, I say it's close. I I give it that. Uh, shooting, I I would give it. I'd give that to KD. Hands down, mm-hmm. I'd give that to KD. Defense, Offense, everything offensive wise, definitely KD got that. He's definitely one of the most versatile offensive scorers of all time. And also, yeah, I, he can cover anybody. Anybody. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no doubt, no doubt about it. I think in the scoring department. Whether it's just anything scoring, okay. Katie, Katie has got that in the bag. Right. Everything outside of that, rebounding, playmaking, all that good stuff, I would right. give that personally. I'll give that to Magic Johnson. Hey, I feel like if you got all this scoring, I feel like you're definitely a better player. I ain't gonna lie. Okay, okay. That's, that's fair. That's fair. You can fair. Score anybody, shoot from anywhere. He's 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 pretty dope. He's pretty dope. Because I think if Kevin Durant, me and my uh, me and my other homie talked about this, if Kevin Durant had that Luka Doncic, LeBron playmaking, they're easily yeah. beating. Man, they're easily wow. beating the Celtics. That'd be amazing. That shows. I ain't gonna lie. You just gave Luka Doncic a huge compliment because he's a, he's a elite scorer too. But Luka's really early. But hey, man, Luka's mm-hmm. gonna be special. He's gonna. Be, no, I, I think he's gonna be in the list one day. I can't. I can't. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. I don't think right now you can really throw them in the legacy. In the legacy conversation, because they're right. still so young and right. they're still proving themselves. I mean, this damn! Team. Look at Luca right. this season or this playoffs. Right. I mean, he literally d- is doing what LeBron LeBron did. He just couldn't right. get them to the promised land. Right, man. I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like his it's, it's Tatum's opportunity to, to mm-hmm. his legacy, and I feel like his Steph is just willing his legacy, basically. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, that's, uh, I feel like that's the difference between what that would be. I feel like he shouldn't even he shouldn't. But I mean, hey, I'm just giving him because he look he looking at the Kobe. So I'm giving him mm-hmm. that type of trajectory. Like when you get there, like, hey, D Wade, w- what year was D Wade when he first got to the finals when he played the Mavericks? Yeah, yeah, you back in I mean? uh, I'm, back in '06, back in '06, I think. I'm giving wasn't that his third or fourth year in the league? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Hey, yeah, I'm holding him up to that. Hey, I'm holding him up yeah. to that that type of. I don't know if he's not that. Hey. You gotta say it then. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It. That's come. It's come. Well, I'm not gonna give him. It's it's pretty early, but I mean, hey, I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. We call him Baby Kobe. They they call him. They come. They compare him to Kobe a lot. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm trying to see if he's really if he's really that player or not. No, yeah, I definitely I definitely feel you on that because like if you're gonna give him that stratosphere to live in, 
then right. he's got to live up to the potential that we're dishing out to him. So I definitely understand where yeah. you're coming from. I'm just applying pressure. I guess it's I'm just applying pressure. I mean, if I was just being real, I mean, we're not gonna give him that much pressure. But hey, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie, man. Imagine if Luca made it to the finals, man. We talking legacy already. Yeah, okay. that that is a valid point. That is a very good point. Same with same with Tatum if he wins the NBA finals, because right. now we're putting it in the conversation of one of the hardest roads to get yeah, to yeah. an NBA finals. And that would be amazing. I'm not any no no smut on him. Cause the, the road there, I mean, they play they played Brooklyn pr pretty uh early in the playoffs. Uh that would have been a pretty good uh finals matchup against the Warriors this year, too, if you ask me. Like mm -hmm. so I feel like they really they really played. I feel like he he I seen I seen this that line. I feel like he he did pretty good. I watched some of the games. I mean, I feel like he and he's a young he's a young player. I feel like he hit his own in, in every matchup. Even if he didn't win every matchup he played, I feel like he hit his own and uh, his team definitely could have set a pretty good team. I feel like his team definitely supported him. And um, you know, Jalen Brown's been pretty good too. He just I mean, we're not even talking about legacy with Jalen Brown. This you know what I mean I don't know why, but I mean, hey, that's just the nature of it. That's that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jalen Brown is the. He he's the he's the Scotty Pippen right now, where yeah. he's being he's being overlooked because Jason Tatum has been playing so good, and when Jason Tatum plays bad and Jalen Brown plays good, Jason Tatum is still the main figure because right. Right. he's that he's that Michael Jordan superstar esque yeah. player, yeah. that LeBron James esque player. Right, hey, that's pretty interesting. But that's a hey, star power. I call it star power. Is this is just a separation between? Hey, that's I feel like that's what makes a star player in, in general. I feel like that's why some players are just born to be stars, you know? Yep, it's, it makes it in the playoffs. So my question to you, I got two questions for you. Okay. One, who's winning this game tonight? Okay. And who is going to be the biggest player or who's going to have the biggest impact okay. for the team that you're picking to win? Okay, I got um, – I think Steph Curry is hot right now. Steph Curry is definitely going to do his thing. Um, we still waiting for Clay Clay to go off. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to see if Clay's gonna go off and that'll be a, a Golden State win. I'm trying to see if Tatum's gonna change the narrative and you know take control of the series. We know we already know Steph's gonna do his thing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So we know Steph's gonna do his thing. He's, he might score 40 again, but I'm I'm trying to see if it's gonna be Steph plus Clay. It's gonna be it's gonna be a bigger point margin if that happen. You feel mm -hmm. me? They don't need Draymond to score, you know what I mean? But it's like <clears throat> they just need Draymond not turning the ball over. He's making some type of impact. So it's like he's – I ain't going to say he's a non-factor, but, I mean, he's a he's hes a big name. He made an all-star team before, but we we was all questioning his ability. <laughs> not his ability, but we were just questioning how good – how how much better they was making him also. I feel like he has to – he needs to play up to his potential. But, I mean, I feel like the Warriors, honestly, another hot take with or without him can still win. <laughs> That says a lot about Draymond to me, though. It says a lot about that, because they don't even have KD anymore. That's a lot of, you know what I mean? But that's how bad he's playing right now. But, I mean, I feel like uh, Golden State can win, but I feel like uh, the Celtics play pretty good, and somebody takes the lead, whether it's uh, Tatum, Tatum having a good game or uh, Jalen Brown, I feel like the Celtics will have a good chance of winning. Um, who am I going to give it to? What I feel like is going to happen? Uh, I feel like uh, I feel like Golden State's going to surprise us. I feel like Golden State's no surprises. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I believe in Tatum, but it's like I believe I believe in Steph Curry and the Warriors a little bit more. That's all it is. Cause Steph is Steph is different. He's special. He's special. Clay's yeah. special too. We just wait. We just waiting for Clay. Clay is somebody that he'll do it when you don't when you don't expect it. So I'm not even even though if he had a hit, he's getting into. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like he's built for the finals. He's a player that's built for the finals. So I feel like even if he's having a had a you know, rough uh, way to the finals. I feel like he's that type of person that he's a star too. He's just he's gonna have one of those games. Like whenever Kobe, Kobe's last game, he still he still had a, a legendary game, even though it was just his last game. It was his 18th season. So it's like I feel like that's like a you know I feel like certain players got that type of trait, and I feel like Clay definitely got that. In. So I, and I feel like he's definitely not gonna you know let this opportunity down. We didn't think he was gonna come back. He's been gone for so long, and he's he's a star. He's he's definitely a star. So. I think I think Golden State's going. I believe in Golden State a little bit more, basically. So you picking Golden State and you're picking Clay as your most impactful player, or are you picking Curry as your most impactful? It's definitely player? Curry. We know Curry's gonna do his thing. It's definitely Curry. I know Curry. Curry's on lock, so he's definitely gonna be the most impactful player throughout the series in general. To me, I feel like we already know what Curry's doing. Like Curry, Curry's been he's consistent. 
they they can guard him. You know what I mean? He's definitely uh one of the best of all time. You know what I mean? When I see when I see Curry, it's crazy. I'm over here thinking like, damn, I'm watching somebody similar to like. I'm not saying he's my, like you know in, similar. I'm not saying similar to Michael Jordan, but somebody that's similar to the legacy of changed the game like the mm-hmm. way Michael Jordan did. And I think I, I can say yes to him. So it's like he's definitely gonna do his thing. Like I, if he had. He's not gonna have a bad game. I mean, they, they was talking about his ankle, and he he had a great game despite his ankle. So I don't, I don't think he's gonna not score anything less than twenty seven the rest of the playoffs. That's just, you know, that's what I that's what I believe in. What I have seen watching Curry over the years in the finals, like I can't even believe they made it back again this year. It's, they consistently making it to the finals. It's crazy. Yeah, and then you brought up a good point on evolution, and every single guy that. As in a top five conversation, we look at LeBron, for example. Everyone's going to talk about LeBron and how he carried he how he carried these teams to the NBA Finals. So, like as a kid, you're going to be like, "I want to be LeBron James because he knows how to get you. He knows how to get to right. the NBA Finals." And then right. people might knock that person for saying that because he didn't win an NBA Finals. But the mentality, yeah. In the earth, I'm, I'm gonna say the mental state right. to do that, where you're just the one person scoring on a day to day basis right. in every single series, mentally and physically, that takes a toll on you throughout the years. Then yeah. we look at MJ. Every time you walk into the finals, you have the team, you outperform with the team, and it looks like yeah. you're just the main guy right. doing doing the problem or that's causing the problems for the opposing team. And then we look at Curry and then we look at Kobe and we look at Shaq, Kobe, RIP Kobe. Every time that you turn around, every time you're about to throw something away or about to shoot a shot, you fade away, jump shot and you scream Kobe will always be an iconic thing in our society. And then Curry, he's changed the game outside of just professionally. I mean, you go. To, I bet if you go to the park right now, you see five people. Four out of those five people are going to be practicing three pointers and then be saying "Curry, bang, yeah, bang." Yep, yep. So yeah, I feel like, he, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say somebody like Kevin Durant. We won't. We don't even look at Kevin Durant as a type of player like that, just because mm-hmm. of just the way that they're marketed or what they've done for the game. Also, I think that also, you know, dictates the way we see players too. No, nah, yeah, I definitely agree. And then I liked what you said on, like, Curry's shadow and, like, MJ's shadow where it's really, really close to each other because right. how they changed the game, how they have been playing in games that matter right. and all those other shadows that lead up to it. For me, I'm going with the Boston Celtics. I had the Celtics winning in six, and – I'm okay. sticking with that. I think okay. the Celtics are going to get the job done in Golden State. They've been one of the best defensive teams in the NBA all season. And the right. biggest impact, I'm not going to say Jason Tatum. And I'm not going to say Jalen Brown. Robert I'm going to say Marcus oh. Smart. Oh. He's going to be the most impactful player in this game. Because it what? all starts with defense. It all starts with defense. You have right. you won defensive player of the year, bro. Okay. I mean, okay. you on a couple possession or not more than a uh, more than a couple possessions, you were able to contain Giannis. Then you were able to contain Kevin Durant, and at some point you were able to get a couple steals and make Curry not look like he's the juggernaut that he is. If it starts with defense, all Marcus Smart has to do is score ten points. As long as Jalen Brown has twenty and yeah. Jason Tatum has twenty five. He, they're going to be good because not only Marcus Smart can play defense, he can play offense too. That adds another facilitator on the offense. We look okay. at Golden State, you see all these facilitators. That's why they have so much space on the floor because yeah. everyone can pass. Same with Marcus Smart. It adds to Jason Tatum. It adds to Al Horford, the big man. It adds on to all these guys, and it makes the floor wider, which makes them harder to beat. Iman Yudoka, he's coming for the win in his okay. first run in the big leagues. I got Marcus Smart being my most impactful player, Marcus. and I got the Boston Celtics, and they're gonna they're gonna win this game. 
I mean, I, I definitely agree with your take. Your take is pretty cold. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Only if Golden State doesn't do their thing. Right, right, right. That's why I definitely, I definitely, I like that take. But Marcus Smart, man, have you seen, have you seen, Marcus Smart is pretty good. I like the way he plays. I like his energy and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, hey, man, I seen Robin Williams the third, man. I seen him moving the yeah, ball. He been balling. He been balling. Bounce, offensive points. Like, all, a lot of his plays translates into, like, you know, it's like a change of a situation. You know, Marcus Smart is a really impactful player. He's not shutting Curry down. He's not shutting, he's not shutting nobody down. With the on the Golden State Warriors, like he said, he's this or even on the Heat. This is this is not the Miami Heat. He said that defensive mm-hmm. player of the year. This is not the Miami Heat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He know that, so I feel like he's he's cold. But I'm like, nah, man, you're not containing Curry. You know what I mean? As legendary as Curry is on defense, I feel like he's dope. He might shut down Clay Thompson. He may shut down Draymond Green. But I feel like he, I feel like he's not going to shut down anybody on the Golden State Warriors to make him up so much so much of a factor on on defense this series. I feel like his uh, his offense definitely is helpful. Like he, he's made some pretty clutch threes, and I'm glad he knocked them down because, you know, I was like, man, he he's he's been improving his three three point shooting and stuff. I hate for him to miss some clutch shots, you know what I mean, for the Celtics. But he's he's knocked them down, so I, he's reliable on offense. But hey, man, Robin Williams the third man, check his stat line. I feel like he's the factor. I feel like he's like a big man that's playing out playing the Warriors big man right now. Ooh. Like, uh, I'm gonna get my Stephen A on real quick. I, 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 I don't know about that. I don't know about that because right. if if it was Miami, I would agree with you. Okay. Because I did say in right, another right. podcast. Shout out Tap Sport, uh, the or not, or yeah, Tap Sports Twenty Seven. Go follow that. But okay. shout out the after party. I did say the biggest person who is going to impact that series is Robert Williams because we saw it. Right? right, Bam right. Adebayo goes crazy. Has the game that we've been waiting for, Bam Adebayo, and we start questioning ourselves: Can Miami beat the Boston Celtics? Can okay. Bam Adebayo be consistent? Robert Williams comes in. Bam Adebayo doesn't even score. I think over ten points, and he gets like four rebounds, and it Ooh. stayed consistent like that. Man, as Robert Williams kept on playing more and more time. Now. Yeah. I don't know about now because Robert Williams, when he's played in Golden State, he's still battling an injury. So I'll, I'll cut him some slack for that. Okay. But you look at Kevin Kayvon Looney, who yeah, Matt has been balling. Yeah, he's been, been balling. Balling. He's been balling this this off season or not this off season. This uh this playoffs. If we look at his playoff game log, give me one second here. Okay. We look at that. And it's just we're we're not expecting this. I mean, six points, then he had another six points, twelve points, and then four points. But that's not where it comes in. It's the rebounding that comes in. Because you yeah. want to know why Golden State won that series against Dallas? It was those second chance opportunities mm. that Kayvon Looney was getting off of those boards. I mean, eleven rebounds, seven rebounds, seven rebounds, nine rebounds against yeah. this Boston Celtics team that we can think. I can rebound. So I don't know if he has been outplaying or Robert Williams has been outplaying Kayvon Looney. I don't know about well, that. I don't know. How many assists how many assists does uh um Williams have? I think let me see. Because I feel like I feel like that's really I I feel like his assists are translating this to like some some pretty nice buckets. Looney's been playing good on the boards, he's been, you know, scoring too, but I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing him, his his playmaking, you know, scoring too, being efficient, but also, like even his rebounds, second chance, second chance. I don't know. I feel like he's just like a, a, he's not getting a lot of touches, but he's a super efficient, efficient player. That's he might not be out playing, but I feel like he's he's really, I feel like he he would be more of a factor than Marcus Smart. You know what I mean? That's that that was my original take on because during during this time, I've got to cut you off during during this series. Robert Williams has only gotten over 10 rebounds two times. And the other times he had two and six rebounds. And assist-wise, he's only gotten over one assist in the series once. And that was in game four. Okay. Okay. That's pretty interesting. He looks like he's having good finals. He looks like he's having good finals. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. It all all comes down to you tonight. Tonight's a big game. It's always is game five. We all know the stat. I think like 70% of teams who win game fives 
go on and win the series. Mm -hmm. So everyone loves looking at statistics. Okay. This is a big game. It's a big okay. game for a lot of people. Now, enough with basketball. We 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 <laughs> talk thirty minutes of basketball. Let's okay. talk about football real quick, and then okay. let's talk about baseball, and then yeah. we, we can we can wrap it up because we know we okay. want to go watch the NBA finals. I mean, who doesn't, right? Right, right. Devonte Adams came out and said, "Derek Carr, Derek Carr <laughs> is on the same wavelength as Aaron." Rodgers. What what you thinking about that? The, Man, I, what, this is not a quote for quote. What he said. Uh, I want to hear the quote. Do you want to hear word for word what he said? Uh, yeah, I got yeah. you. It, it's gonna it's gonna take me it's gonna take me a minute because I gotta I gotta find it. Okay. But, I think I, I heard about it today, but I think I think people was trying to put it nope. in context. He said, as far as talent and ability, it's really similar. If I'm keeping it real. Devontae Adams on comparing Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr. What you thinking about that? Um, man, I mean, we just coming off a hot NBA conversation, talking about legacy and things that other people just cannot do. I mean, Aaron Rodgers in the in the in the in the, the, the NFL playoffs with the ball in his hands is not Derek Carr. That's my take. <laughs> that's my take, and I feel like that's very important. <laughs> Okay, okay. I th I think Derek Carr, Derek Carr and A Rod, A Rod blows him out of the. I think A Rod blows him out of the water. I mean, you pass for. I think when you pass for over four thousand yards as a quarterback, more than two times, or I would say more than more than four times. Yeah. If you do that consistently, that's saying stuff about your elite abilities at the quarterback position. And I felt like Devontae yeah. Adams was in a situation where you can't you can't say nothing wrong. And plus you're best friends with them too. So you're right. gonna have a little bias mm -hmm. thrown in that statement. You can't just go up there and be like, oh yeah, Derek Hart's bad. Yeah, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is such a bad quarterback. Because then that's just gonna ruin the team morale and then that's gonna right, ruin right. your chemistry that you guys built up to this point. Don't get me wrong. Derek Carr is a good quarterback. I think Derek Carr is a slept on quarterback, but talent wise, I think I don't think it's I don't think it's close. No. Because Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers' vision when it's two minutes or less is just phenomenal. And Aaron Rodgers' vision in general on the football field just he makes it look effortless. He just sure. makes it look so easy and he's thrown over 40 uh, 40 plus touchdowns three times has passed for 4,000 yards or more 10 times four time MVP and then Derek Carr the most touchdowns he's thrown is 32 and then he's passed for 4,000 yards for <coughs> or more excuse me four straight years and okay. his leadership his leadership comes in sure. I think I think that's where he has the edge over Aaron Rodgers because okay. I think if Aaron Rodgers was on the team that he had this year where everything was going on and everything, or yeah, with everything going on, right. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is, this might be a hot take, I don't think Aaron Rodgers is getting that team to the playoffs because there's a lot of turmoil that was in that locker room. And Derek Carr not only gets them back into playoff reach, he gets them into the playoffs, and they were one play away from advancing to the playoffs. I think Derek Carr, that, that made a case for, for for MVP, uh, that that's a thirty yeah. for that, that's that's a thirty yeah. for thirty right there. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely dope, and I definitely think he definitely has uh, better leadership skills than uh, Aaron Rodgers. But I feel like you know, I feel like his maybe his lack of leadership skills is you know it shows how shows how how good he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's true. Also, still how good he is just with the football, just you know with the vision and stuff. You know, somebody like that, he probably don't. He probably never had to work on his leadership skills. So <laughs> just saying, Derek Carr, Derek Carr, he had to be humble. He had he had to lead the team. Like Aaron Rodgers is he's just a dope talent. You know what I mean? Just it just it says a lot about Aaron Rodgers and how dope he really is and how how special he really is as a player, honestly. Yeah, and it brings me back to one of the games. I think it was 2017 or 2016. It was my freshman year of college or my freshman year of high school. Okay. I remember Jack Prescott. He brings the Cowboys within field goal range to put oh, them man. up by put them up by three. Aaron okay. Rodgers drives down the field, and I think he 
he gets either Mason Crosby in field goal range or he yeah. goes and scores a touchdown. I mean, there's just so many moments of Aaron Rodgers doing things like that where his talent and abilities to do things like that in a clutch situation in that playoff atmosphere just speaks louder than just his talents and abilities in general. Right. Yeah, man. He 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 he's pretty he's pretty dope. Um I feel like Dev- Devontae Adams uh, he's a he's a pretty dope uh receiver. I feel like he just wanna he wanna make sure he can maintain his uh his play between the two quarterbacks going between both of those teams and stuff. Didn't they say that uh he played um uh, he played with Derek Carr in college, right? Yeah, uh Fresno State. They played together at Fresno State. Right. Yeah, so I feel like that that's definitely I think I think we're we're over here trying to wrap to his hot take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully hope Devontae, if you man, if you hear this, we we know that you're trying to we know you're trying to play both sides of the battlefield. But like we really know who you think is a better quarterback. No, nah, most definitely. I hope so. I hope he's not that he's not delusional. He's an NFL player. He's pretty smart. Yeah. The last thing we gotta talk about is the Miami Marlins. I mean, shout out to Mike because I didn't believe him when he said this. But they're sizzling, baby. They're sizzling. You got you got any take on the Miami Marlins before we get out of here and watch the finals? I'm not gonna lie. I never I don't watch that much baseball. I do not Ooh. watch that much baseball. <laughs> so my, I've, I've been to a I've been to a Rough Riders game in Dallas, but mm-hmm. I, I haven't I, I the Rangers played pretty good whenever I was in uh I think was it middle school? I think the, the Rangers won two World Series, but that's that's I don't know too much about baseball, I'm not gonna lie. Hey, that's all good. That's all good. All I got to say is Miami, Miami Marlins. And Mike, if you're listening to this, I know you are. So I'm going yeah. to talk to you. We're I'm missing talking Mike right to, now. I'm we talking to Mike you, right. Mike. Mike, <laughs> you're right. The Miami Marlins have been rolling. You are completely correct on that. But, but, because we still got to do our top 10, Mike. Don't forget. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. They have raised in the top 10. But we look at who the Miami Marlins beat. By the way, they're losing right now to, to the Philadelphia Phillies. They are 7-3. and three. They did beat two out of three from the Astros. But before that, I mean, come on, Mike. The <laughs> Nationals? The the Nationals? One of the – I mean, c- come on. Like, come on. Hey. They have been rolling. I will give you that. And their pitching has been good. It's been phenomenal. One of the top – one of the tops in the league. But I don't think it will hold up. And Boston Red Sox are kind of they're kind of creeping up on the mic. Seattle Mariners <laughs> that kind of dropped the ball this weekend. So I, I will talk to you about that when you get back. But good take though. Uh, good take. <laughs> yeah, I know Mike definitely won't get on this conversation. We we missing Mike right now, y'all. We missing Mike. Yeah, shout, shout out Mike. Shout out Mike. The greatest, greatest co-host. To ever co-host a podcast. That's it for the 1497 podcast today. Thank you, D Wave X, for joining today. You got any shout outs to you know dish hey, out for uh, one time? Any shout outs? You want me to shout out somebody or shout out something? Uh, 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 hey, hey. This, that, that's that's all you. Whoever you want to shout out, you got the time to do it right now. Hey, anybody listening, make sure you guys check out my YouTube channel. Type in D Wave X on YouTube, subscribe. Um, we started a show called Oh My Call My Eye. Check out the merch. Uh, yeah, just check out the check out the YouTube channel, y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go check out Deep Wave X YouTube. As always, subscribe to the podcast. I mean, you're already listening to it on YouTube. You might as well hit the subscribe, subscribe. button, hit might the like button, too. hit the comment button, and you might as well share it to someone that you care about a lot too. And then you got to go tell them, whoa. Aren't we supposed to follow 1497 Sports on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter? You're damn right. You need to go follow us on all those social media platforms. Also, subscribe to us on all podcasting platforms. Me and Mike will be back on Wednesday. Deep Wave X, you're more than welcome to stop by whenever you want. Great conversation. I love having you here. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Let's see who win the finals. Let's see who win the finals. Hey. Go Celtics, baby. Celtics and six, baby. Cowboy.